This is my parents' patio. And these are my parents. They need something as cool as they are to liven up this space. Today, we're gonna build them a pergola. This is the first time that we've ever done anything uh, this large. And a big thank you to Ted and Wilma for recruiting our help on this project. <sighs> where, where, how did you know how to put this all together? I had excellent help, as were you. The dimensions for this project is approximately 16 feet by 13, and then the overall height, I believe, was around 10 feet. Um, we have to fit it in this little patio area. We're also using cedar. Cedar, as you may know, can be very expensive. Somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion, 300 million billion dollars. And so we called all over the area, several different lumber yards, trying to find a good price, one that fit our budget. We were able to find a place out in the middle of nowhere that gave us a really good deal and dropped off this massive pile of cedar, beautiful cedar. The first few steps of building a pergola can be very time consuming and tedious, but it's vital that you take your time and get your measurements correct, get everything square, or else you're gonna have problems down the road. We're gonna use this side wall as our reference point to lay out the very first base for our six by six post. We need to measure off the wall to accommodate for the thickness of our material and for the bolt and the washer and the nut that's going to be attaching the beam to the post. That was approximately two and three quarters. But unbeknownst to us, there was one thing that we did measure that we didn't add to that total measurement. And we'll realize that later on. We make a mistake before we even get this thing going. But for now, we're going to continue to do it the wrong way. We'll use a chalk line to line up these two bases. And then we'll also do the same thing for the final two. And now it's time to drill into the concrete. We're using my Makita 40 volt hammer drill. This thing works for purposes like this, but a rotary hammer drill would be much better. For this project, we're gonna use half inch by four inch concrete anchor bolts by Tapcon. These things are gonna work perfect. Now you might think we need to go ahead and crank this joker, but we wanna wait until the other bases are set so that we can take some measurements and just make sure everything is nice and square and then we'll tighten things down. So this video just took a drastic turn. We have a new guest that's going to offer all of his expertise and help. His name's Adam. Pergola Building Extraordinaire is here to offer his expertise and his help and all of his muscle. Again, I'm using our Makita 40 volt hammer drill. And this thing is a hoss. It's definitely more than capable of doing this job or at least maybe one or two holes. But at this point, this is the fourth hole. We've been drilling for a while. We've been putting this thing to the test. We may have run into some rebar down in the patio and it eventually just overheated and stopped working. So that sucks. Next up on the list, we've got to set this post on the post base. We've got to get it plumb, got to get it level. Gonna use a couple of two by fours to help secure it and level it before we attach the hardware at the base. And this is the moment where I think Ted realizes <laughs> that something's not right. That two by 12 is not gonna fit between that post. So we have to take the two by fours off and take the post down. But we have a solution for this. Now that we have that fixed and we've got a place to put our two by 12 so it doesn't interfere with the wall, we're going to set it back up. We have to add the hardware that is going to be adjacent to the wall since we can't reach behind there. We'll have to add that first and then rotate the post to set the other pieces of hardware.
In continuation of the tedious work, we're gonna go ahead and set the second post. And you would think, hey, why don't we go ahead and notch it out? Well, we can't do that quite yet because the ground, the patio might not be level. So what we're gonna do is set this post, get it all plumb, and then we'll have to use a line level from the bottom of our notch on the far right post, run it across to the next post and make that mark. And that way we know that is where we're gonna begin the cut for our notches. That way our two by 12 is gonna be perfectly level. Ted and Adam had to make a run to the store. So we got it notched out and sanded down, looking really good and setting it is all up to me. All right, so our very first post is fully up and it is almost seven o'clock. Uh, we definitely did not make as much progress as we wanted to today. Uh, Ted and Adam had to run back to the hardware store. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. To get a bit that's longer, long enough to be able to go through our six by six post. The one I got is not long enough. And then from there, what we'll do, set our, our bolts through our uh, ledger board, call it that. And it's been notched into the post. Our two by 12 will go, will sit on top of those notches. And then this is a part of the system. It looks just like this, it's adjustable. This is the part of the system that will connect six by six post with the two by two 12, two by 12 um, ledger board or beam or whatever you want to call it. At this point, we need to put up the beam. This is our first beam. This is a two by 12 by 20. And what we're gonna do is make a couple of marks on here, get it flush with the back beam or the back post, make our mark on the left side so that we can cut it where we want it. When I say that this is the heaviest piece of wood, I'm not kidding. This thing is definitely a two person lifting job unless you have some sort of, you know, I don't know, crane or something. So we ran into a bit of a dilemma yesterday when we had to make a little bit of adjustment at the top of this board and notch it so that it all fit correctly. That changed. The, the length that we needed for the bolts that we had. And these are kind of a special order bolt. There's nobody around here that has them. So what we had to do was make a quick adjustment, run to Lowe's, buy some cap screws that we think are gonna fit, and we're gonna give that a shot and see if we can make it work. And a huge congratulations to Ted for figuring this out. The cap screws do work. They are just long enough to fit on both sides and reach all the way through our beam and our post. So praise the Lord, we can keep moving forward. And just a word of wisdom, if there is anything in your project, no matter what it is, that's major and it changes, there's always something else down the line that's going to need to be changed as well as a result of the initial change. And this is an example of that. So, but now that we have a drill bit that is long enough and we've got the right screws for these two posts, the exception, we can go ahead and pre-drill our holes on the other post and get those bolts and washers and nuts all attached to the beam. There was another run to the hardware store, so setting this next post is all on me. Pretty straightforward. We've already kind of done this method as you've seen before, but basically gonna be using these two by fours to help stabilize it and keep it plumb. You're probably wondering why I switched the two by fours. You have to set the two by four on the side that the post is leaning towards so that that way you can stabilize it and send it back so that it will be level. When you're leveling and checking for plumb on a post, it's usually, I would say, a good idea to check a couple of different spots on the post for plumb just in case the wood has a, div a divot or any kind of variation that would affect the device that you're using that is checking for level. And once the boys got back from the hardware store, I was done with the post. So we're moving on to using the string and the line level again to mark where the bottom of our beams are gonna be for the other side. Once the lines are drawn and our supports are added, we'll throw the two by 12s up there. We'll re-plumb everything, clamp it down. 
We'll make our marks for our decorative edges and then also pre-drill our holes to attach the beams to the post. Bring it all down, take it to the miter saw to cut our decorative edges, throw it back up there. Granted, we are doing more tedious work, but it's worth it. The alternative is to leave it up there and freehand it with a circular saw. We didn't want to do that because we wanted to be able to do a repeatable, accurate cut. The angle is approximately 37 degrees across the pergola for our rafters and for these beams. So we want that to look good and consistent. So we're gonna bring it down and use our miter saw to do that job. Once all that's done, it's time to move on to the fun part, more math to equate the spacing for our purlins or our rafters or joists, whatever you want to call it. We want these rafters to be 16 on center, and there's a few different ways you can do the math to get it as close as possible. I don't think it's ever going to be perfect, but this is the way we did it. We went ahead and added our first two boards. These are gonna sit on the inside of our post, and we're gonna measure the distance between those two boards. They'll be a part of the equation, but we're actually gonna do it a little bit differently. So we'll set the those, we'll measure, we come up with 174 and a half inches. You divide that by 16, since you want them to be 16 on center, it's gonna give you 10.9, round up to 11. Because our boards are, the first two boards are already set, it's gonna be 11 spaces that we need, and not 11 boards. So 11 spaces, that's 12 boards. We already have our first two, so we only need to cut and place 10 in the middle. Now, what we're doing here, as you see on Ted's side, we've got our joist hangers, and then on my side, there's nothing. We're gonna be using some extra hardware, some extra brackets to attach those rafters to the beams. So this is kind of the secondary side, whereas Ted's side is the primary side. And so what we're doing here is double checking to make sure that there's not a significant crown or warp in this ledger board that's going to affect the placement of these rafters. Now that that's done, it's time to move on to cutting these rafters and setting them in place. We had two of these six by six by eight posts, and we only approximately needed a little under four feet for each of these bracings. So what Ted's saying here, we're just gonna cut it in half and then we can cut our angle. And then what we'll do later on is use the Sawzall to trim off the excess uh, above the top. So we've got our second brace cut. Basically what we're gonna do, again, this is 37 degrees, similar to our um, joists. And we're going to try to get as close to uh, button up against that bottom beam as we can. That's kind of our first one right there, but we've got our second one cut and we're gonna get this one clamped real quick before we put this one up there. And then what we'll do is drill through the joists and the brace put another big old bolt in there and do the same thing on all the other three corners. Never underestimate the simplicity, but the effectiveness of a string and a line level. Once again, using this method to determine where this next bracing piece is gonna go. We're gonna use two bolts here at the bottom of this bracing to connect it to the post. And I want it to go through both pieces of wood 
the actual post, I only wanted to go through a little bit over halfway, somewhere around halfway. And so that equaled out to about 11 and a quarter of an inch from the end of the post to where I'm gonna start my pre-drilled hole that you see me doing here. And I'm just gonna repeat that on all the other braces. We'll repeat the same process to attach the bracings to these rafters and pre-drill all of our holes, measure kind of the center of the board and then place our washer about an inch apart from the center line. So each bolt will be about two inches apart. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the home stretch. All we have to do is use our sawzall to trim off the excess of the bracing and any of those six by six posts, and then we're done. we are finally finished with this pergola build we did it it looks amazing super proud of it how do you guys feel about it i love it <laughs> like really love it <laughs> i think it's great good job justin. great Thanks. job justin and dad it's a huge project and 2023 has been the year of big projects so why not continue them yeah we'll just add this to the list uh, special thanks to Ted and Wilma for believing in us to be able to help carry this to completion. This is their pergola, their, their home. We've been doing a, a massive makeover here in the backyard, which you'll see most of that uh, coming soon. And then special thanks to our friend Adam for coming in and supervising and being the muscle. Thank you all for watching. We are going to go get cleaned up and prep and plan for the next project. And we'll see you all at the next DIY. Bye. It's time to inside. Are you kidding?